So think about the following function, f of x equal to x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Can somebody tell me the domain of this function? Yes? Exactly. So the domain of this function is all real numbers except 1. So it's like negative infinity to 1 or 1 through infinity. But uh, as you can see here, I'm using round brackets, meaning that 1 is not included. So that's the domain of this function. So <clears throat> if a question was asked, what is f of 1? Then the proper answer is that the value is undefined. So f of 1 is undefined. However, sometimes we want to discuss what happens to this function as it gets closer and closer to 1, as x gets closer and closer to 1. And there's a symbol for that. Let me write this. There's a symbol for that. Limit of f of x as x goes to 1. Let's think about the following question. So, uh, or, or uh, let me actually write in an in a ex exercise format. So, the first example we're going to investigate is limit x going to 1 of x squared minus 1, x minus 1. Okay. We can think about this this limit in two different ways, one numerically and one graphically. And although I didn't fully explain what this symbol limit means, if you see these examples, you'll understand what I mean when I say <coughs> limit of uh, x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 as x goes to 1. So first, numerically. The numerical way to understand this limit is the following. <coughs> x, f of x, So what I want you to think about is try to evaluate the, the function, this, this is your f of x, try to evaluate this function as x, x gets closer and closer to 1. Say 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999. These values get closer and closer to 1 from the left, right? Uh, in fact, if you did 0 0.9999 without ending, what, what value is it? That's exactly 1, right? That's how you learned it in high school. And from this side, you have 1.1, 1.01, and just think about these numbers getting closer and closer to 1. So uh, if I had more room for more numbers, I would be plugging in 1.0001, and so on and so on. Okay? okay, so let's plug in 0 0.9 into this function. And if you plug in 0 0.9 into that, that function, you get, uh, I think you get 1.9 as your result. <coughs> I mean, ideally, we should be 
punching this into a calculator and do all the calculation, but uh, without having to use a calculator, I just know that that should be the answer, okay? Uh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay, uh, then, then you plug in 0 0.99, and you, that means 0 0.99 squared is uh, 0 0.99 whatever, okay? And then this will be 0 0.99 minus 1, uh, that's negative 0 0.01. And anyways, if you do all the calculation that way, uh, after some long calculation, you'll get that the answer is 1.9 now. And then you plug this in here, 0 0.999 to squared minus 1. Uh, it's kind of huge. But after some long calculation, you're going to get this, 1.9. And then you plug in 1. What happens if you plug in 1? If you plug in 1.001, you get 2.001. And uh, if you plug in 1.01, you get 2.01. And if you plug in 1.1, you get uh, 2. After this investigation, you can draw the following conclusion. The more your x value becomes closer and closer to 1, your y value, or the f of x, the value of that, the function, gets closer and closer to what value? 2, two right? Yeah. It, this is closer to 2 than this one. And this is closer to 2 than this one, right? Uh, on the right side, it's the same thing. 2.001 is closer to 2 than this one and 2.01 is closer to 2 than this one. So you can see that <coughs> near 1, near the x value 1, the function of x produces a number very close to 2. That's what we observe, okay? And that's what I mean when I say that the limit of x going to 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 equals to 2. That's what this one. So, uh, as you plug in x values that are very close to 1, the value of this function will get closer and closer to 2. That's what this symbol means. Now, let's think about the, the graph of this function, and then maybe that's going to give us another viewpoint of uh, why it has to be this way. Okay? All right. Uh, if you had wondered how I was able to get these values so quickly without a calculator, well, uh, uh, first of all, I didn't memorize it. I just knew. Okay? Well, how do you know? Uh, I know it because x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, in fact, factors into x plus 1 times x minus 1 over x minus 1. And x minus 1, x minus 1 cancels and it's equal to x plus 1, right? So actually, uh, when I was plugging in 0 0.99, in my head, I wasn't really doing 0 0.99 squared. No, all I was doing was I did 0 0.99 plus 1, and what's that? 1.99. Easy, right? So that was the trick, OK? If you want to impress your friends. Yeah. All right. Now, let me, let me ask you something. What's the difference between this function with that function? Let's say here's a function, here's another function. Algebraically, I said they are the same. What's the difference? That one can never be undefined. Right, this is always defined. The domain are different. This is the domain of this right function is that uh, all reals can be plugged into x. Whereas on the left side, you're not allowed to plug in 1. Okay. So while it is true that this is the same as that, when you draw the graph of this, it distinguishes itself from this one at just one point, which is x equal to negative 1, uh, actually equal to positive 1. Yeah. At that point, it will be different. Okay? So let's think about it. First, <coughs> do you know how to draw y equal to x plus 1? That's easy. That's a slope 1, y, y into step 1. So here is 1 here, and uh, here's a slope 1 straight line. 
However, because at 1 is not defined, there's a hole there. There's a hole at, uh, at 1. Okay. Who can tell me the coordinate of this hole? Where is the hole located? 1 comma 2. Because if you plug in 1 into here, 1 plus 1 is 2. So we know that the hole is 1 comma 2. Okay. On this graph, let's think about what it means when we plug in values, that x values that are clo going closer and closer to 1. Okay. So you are plugging values in the x, and plugging <coughs> values into the function means you go straight up until you meet the point on the line. Right. So here, here are three points, 1, 2, 3, and these are three points correspond to the, the y values. The, va the y values correspond to the height of these points that I, I plotted, right? And as you can see, if, you, if your x value get closer and closer from the left side, what happens to the y value? It goes up closer and closer to 2. The height of this open circle is 2. So as you go, as x goes closer and closer to 1, the y value, the height, gets closer and closer to 2. Same thing happens on the right side. The height becomes closer and goes down closer and closer to 2. Okay. That's how you can figure out limit by uh, using the graph. If you use the graph and you investigate the, the altitude of each point, then you can figure out where the limit goes closer and closer to. So again, uh, graphically, this, this should be named graphically, <coughs> graphically, uh, we get the same conclusion that this limit should be 2.